Okay, so we're back for week two. Uh, last week we did the front, so go check out that video if you didn't see us do the front brakes. This week we're doing the rear brakes. Uh, for the rear, there's only one little extra bit that you're gonna need, and it's a, what size is this star? EP14, you're gonna need an EP14 star uh, socket so that you can get the rear hanger bolts out because they are different than the front for whatever reason, couldn't tell you that. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. We're gonna do the rear brakes on the R60 Countryman. We got all new everything. New pads, new rotors, new calipers. And we're gonna walk you through the whole process of how we take off the old stuff and prepare the new stuff, put it on. So let's go ahead and do that for the rears. So this week is also sponsored by outmotoring.com. Again, I used them to get all the parts for this Countryman for the brakes. I bought them there and they ship them super fast. And that's one of the great things about them. Really fast shipping. So go check them out, outmotoring.com. Use MVL5 at checkout to save 5% off your order. So once again, thanks to outmotoring.com for sponsoring this video. And uh, let's go ahead and get back to the brake job on the Countryman. So of course we gotta start by jacking up the car. How else would you get to those brakes? So we'll jack up the car, remove the rear wheel, and also don't forget to throw a jack stand under there for some added safety. Okay, so we got the car jacked up. Next step is to take off the rotor, and we use that with this rotor bolt right here. Next step is to crack open that brake line. A little hard to see, but we have the brake line free. Now we're gonna pop off the caliper. I definitely recommend any impact wrench tools you can use if you have any. So we've got the caliper loose. We do have one cable here. This is the uh, brake pad wear sensor. It seems to be on the left front and right rear, but nowhere else in the car. And you can just pop that out with a pair of pliers. Fairly easy. I mean, your mileage may vary depending on the amount of rust you have. Now to remove the rear brake pad sensor, you're gonna take this pliers, you're gonna grab a hold of that sensor, you're gonna pull straight back. Now be careful because there's a little uh, wire spring clip that holds it in place. We drop that on the ground, we find that later and put that back on there. Once that's gone, we can get the caliper bolts all the way out and try to wiggle off the caliper. Now these calipers had torn dust boots, which is why we needed to replace the brakes in the first place. And uh, so we're gonna remove these, get these out of the way and get ready for the new ones. You may need a little bit of a screwdriver to help you pry that off. Next, we gotta get the e-brake out of the way. Um, in order to do that, we gotta rotate the clip that holds the e-brake cable in there, and then you just pop it out like that. There it is. And then, from there, you can use a 13 millimeter wrench to open up the e-brake and pop out the e-brake cable, just like that. All right, next up is the uh, hanger bolts. And this is where we need that star uh, socket. And you can see the hanger bolts are right there. That star pattern, there's one and two. Okay, so while we've got this hanger off, we're gonna take out these old mount clips, just like we did on the front, and we'll replace them with the new ones that came with the new Techstar brake pads. And also while we're here, we'll re-grease these slide pins just to prolong our life a little bit more. Okay, we've got both uh, slide pins re-greased, reinserted, and they are a little bit different, so you'll only be able to put them in the appropriate uh, receptacle. Now we can go ahead and get the new mounting clips and get those installed onto this hanger. So we'll take out those clips and just snap those on. They only go one way as well, so you'll be able to see it uh, visually when you go to try put it on there. Okay, with the mounting clips installed, again, we're gonna put just a tiny bit of grease on there so that those pads slide in there really nicely. It makes the installation much easier too. Again, don't go too far on this, just a dab. So we'll do that, and then we'll go ahead and insert those brake pads next. Next up, we're gonna grab our pads. We do have to pay attention to which one has the sensor uh, housing and put that on the appropriate side. In this case, we want it on the inside rotor. So this is the one that has the uh, slot for the sensor. You can see it's closed on the back. The other one is uh, a little more open on the back. Okay, so this one's gonna go here. Spoiler alert, we did end up putting these pads on the wrong side of the hanger because we forgot it's upside down. Um, and so yeah, later on down the road, we just swapped the pads on the other side. You'll see that in the video uh, when we get to that point. But yeah, put these pads in the new mounting clips, get this hanger ready to be reinstalled. So next we're gonna get the rotor ready. We're gonna clean it off with some brake cleaner really quick. Let's do that.
get the caliper out of the box. There's our new caliper, there's our e-brake, there's our bleed port, and we do need to remove, remove the plug where the uh, brake line is gonna go. Okay, so at this point we're ready to remove that old caliper. We need a 14 millimeter wrench, and we're gonna break that line open so we can twist the caliper off of the line. You don't wanna twist the line because you might uh, break it or kink it up. So definitely just hold the brake line and twist the caliper off of that line. So now we're gonna take the new caliper and just do the opposite. We're gonna hold the line and twist the new caliper on. Look how much shinier this caliper is. Give it one more winter and it won't look the same. We'll go ahead and tighten that down because we're ready to go on to the next step. Okay, new caliper is on. Now we're gonna get the rotor, the hub ready for the rotor. We're gonna put a little bit of uh, never seize on there so our lives are a little bit easier in the future. So we take our new rotor and we're gonna line it up uh, with our rotor bolts to hold it on there. There it is right there. We're gonna put this hanger back on with the new pads over the rotor. So get it on there and then I'm gonna go underneath and we'll go ahead and put those bolts right back on the hanger. We're again using that weird star pattern. As you can see, we got both of those on there, torqued down to spec, and now we're ready to move back onto that shiny new caliper. We'll put a little bit of grease on the back side of these pads, just so that we don't get metal on metal squeak. So we can go ahead and slide that new caliper on, and it's not fitting exactly as it should. I wonder why. Here's a quick little lesson. We did this one backwards because we just didn't realize, but the larger pad uh, has, the pad with the sensor has a larger top to it. It needs to go on the inside. I'm just gonna slide these out. You can do it while they're on the hanger, uh, already attached. Okay, there we go. There we go. Correct side, uh, the sensor should be on the inside, the non-sensor should be on the outside. The sensor one has obviously got that top lip uh, to it. So now, hold that sensor. Now this should go on. Let's just test fit it. Yeah. And yep, that goes on right. Okay, brake pads on the right side. Now it's time to install that emergency brake cable. So we're gonna take this cable and we're gonna slide it through the hole in the back. And then we're gonna have to take a 14 mil wrench again and open up that brake. Essentially engage the e-brake so we can put the cable in. So you see the brake cable comes through there and then clamps into this catch. Uh, so you need to use your 14 mil to rotate this bolt, which will open it up. Uh, so you slide that cable in there. Caliper ready to go with the e-brake cable in. We can go ahead and put the bolts in to hold the caliper onto that rear hanger. As a reminder from last week, the hanger bolts are set to 88 foot-pounds of torque and the uh, caliper should be set to 22-ish. I'll leave the exact numbers down in the description so you can check that out. So just be aware that the uh, clip that is on the uh, wear pad sensor can fall out, or should fall out. So make sure you put it back on there. Otherwise your wear brake, your pad wear sensor will not fit, snap back in appropriately. So put that back on, push it in there, it should snap into place. Yeah, there we go, that's what we wanted. Okay. Uh, last part we need to do, put our often forgotten e-brake clip back on. Okay. You're just gonna snap it on and then rotate it so that it can't back out. It's up against the uh, arm of the e-brake. So that should be it. Next step, bleed the brakes. Bleed the brakes. So then the last step is to bleed the brakes. We're gonna need two people to do that. One is gonna pump the brakes. The other is gonna open the bleeder valve and uh, just let the air bubbles out until it's all set. It might be a good idea to go ahead and put some more fluid in the reservoir before you do that so you don't run out. And your brake fluid reservoir on an R60, please don't mind the leaves is way up here in this little hidden compartment up there in the, in the sill so pop open the hidden compartment and then there is your brake fluid reservoir oh yeah some bubbles there okay so after it's done being bled i'm gonna remove the hose then we're gonna put the uh sensor cable inside the cap uh for the for the bleed valve so put tuck it in there and then pop that cap on there so no dirt gets in there. And that is all set. We're gonna put the tires on, just double check the reservoir to make sure there's plenty of brake fluid in there and then uh, go for a test drive. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, the rears are done. If you hadn't seen how we did the fronts last week, go check out the video, I'll leave a link for that. 
Um, but leave any questions you have for the rears or the fronts. I'll try and answer them. If not, Adam will answer them. And uh, just make sure things look good uh, before you go out on that racetrack. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. We wave to other minis when you see them, and that's gonna be it for this one.